So, so um, uh, I'm going to thank Phil, who's uh, uh, wandered off, and say good morning to um, all of you. So, really, really um, welcome to London, welcome to the British Library, uh, and welcome to this event on building library labs. Um, I'm Adam Farquhar, and I'm sort of the founding head of digital scholarship uh, here at the British Library, and also the principal investigator of the PI for the British Library Labs. Um, and over the next couple of days, um, so uh, you'll get to know many of the wonderful folks from the Digital Scholarship Department um, who are in the room, or uh, Mia and Andrew and Neil and Tom and Eleanor, and there are a few more scattered about. Uh, Stella's here somewhere. Um, so uh, do get to know them. Uh, they're fantastic, uh, talented um, uh, uh, folks who have uh, lots, lots, uh, lots to share. Um, and I also hope that uh, we'll get to know uh, all of you uh, as well as we engage in what I expect to be a set of really rather intense um, conversations, um, uh, discussions where we explore right what, what a digital lab uh, can be uh, at a library and how we can make them work. Um, and I think uh, that's really important. We thought uh, uh, long and hard about how to do this um, these two days. Um, we thought about you know lecture after lecture, uh, and we ended up with a structure that is much more interactive, much more talking from you, much more in the way of breakout sessions and exploration of specific topics. And I hope that that will turn out to have been um, a clever decision. Um, we should get a pretty good idea by the end of the day um, today. In any case, uh, so so the work that we're doing here, I'd say, is in the context of the the British Library's larger vision, uh, which is called uh, Living Knowledge. Um, it runs till 2023, so we've got a, a ways to go on it. Um, and I think uh, amongst these six uh, strategic priorities around custodianship, research, support for business, cultural learning, and international, um, the vision is there in the middle. It's to make our intellectual heritage accessible to everyone for research, inspiration, and enjoyment. Um, and also to strive in an institution to be open, creative, and innovative. And I think the labs have been on the, the front edge of helping us to become open, innovative, and creative with especially our digital collections in the research context. Um, Phil uh, mentioned that we have folks from all over the world. Uh, uh, it's true. Um, uh, there are uh, lots of you here. Um, uh, 40 institutions, uh, 70 people have registered. Um, uh, I think this is on the large side of what we were planning for, you can see um, from the room. Um, uh, hopefully um, it won't get too warm in here. Um, that's the one risk with this particular room uh, when you've got a good crowd in it. Um, we'll try to keep the, um, the temperature turned down as well as we can and, and that will likely um, improve during the course of the day. Um, I wanted, uh, by way of overview to give um, a little bit of context and background about digital scholarship here at the British Library. Um, so over the summer, um, we've refreshed our, our mission, our vision statement, um, as one does periodically. And um, uh, this is um, actually, it's quite new, and this is one of the largest external audiences yet that I've um, uh, said anything about it to. So our mission uh, is pretty straightforward. We enable the use of the British Library's digital collections for research, inspiration, creativity, um, and enjoyment. And I'd like to um, uh, just unpack that a little bit. Uh, so first of all, our, our first um, call is, is, is for research and researchers, right? Um, but that's far from the only activity. And in our work through the labs over the last five years, um, we've really seen the value um, and the attraction of the digital collections to a much wider range of, of people. Um, we've seen how they inspire the people to create new products, um, uh, create new artwork. In fact, uh, we'll hear a little bit about a nice example of that um, tomorrow, one of the lightning talks. Um, both physical uh, and digital space, excuse me, um, uh, both physical and digital artworks, I, I, I wanted to say, um, and stimulate really um, uh, enjoyment uh, very broadly. Complementing this very outward-looking mission, um, 
Uh, we need to ensure that our collections, our systems, our policies and processes meet those emerging needs, that they're up to the job. Um, uh, and to do that, we have to have a deep understanding of what people are trying to do. Uh, um, I think, I don't know about your institution, um, uh, but um, we found that um, as we go through the process of redesigning and re-implementing and re-architecting our, uh, our digital systems uh, and processes, um, uh, it's super important to keep an eye out for the needs of digital researchers. Um, and there needs to be an explicit and, and clear advocacy um, for that. I'll say that um, this work of influencing uh, systems and processes uh, and policies um, isn't always glamorous and flashy work, um, but uh, it's super important. And it's the thing that actually, over the medium to long term, enables us to achieve our vision. And I think we also need to note that, especially five years ago, but really, really still today, um, people who want to or will benefit from working with our digital collections don't necessarily um, know what they want. They can't clearly articulate their requirements. Um, and that makes it, I think, you know, a lot of fun to work in this sort of emerging practice area. But it also means we have to be quite careful about how we design and implement things. Um, some of the traditional uh, um, approaches don't work as well. We need to co-evolve rather than um, design and deliver. So um, within that mission, um, we have sort of five um, uh, areas. Uh, one is support for digital scholars. Uh, we spend a lot of time with them, uh, understanding their needs, enabling access, providing guidance, and providing technical assistance to them. Um, and the labs has been really core in, in doing that. Um, we connect and share. Uh, there's a really vibrant community, and uh, many of you are uh, part of it already, and those who are not yet, um, I hope, soon will feel that they are. Um, we had a great meeting uh, uh, yesterday with the Libre DH uh, Digital Humanities Group. Some people here were at that. Um, there are uh, an upcoming lab symposium here in London in, what's the date? 12th of November. 12th of November for people who are um, uh, in the area, which we do, uh, this will be our fifth one. We, we do that every year. Um, uh, we view ourselves as agents for change. Um, they, both in the library space and in the research space. Um, uh, we do a lot of piloting new services, but, but also that advocacy um, role is, is super important um, there. Uh, we invest in our staff. Um, and I think on the one hand, that's about members of the Digital Scholarship Department honing their skills and valuing new ones. Uh, for, Example, many of us did a statistics course um, earlier this year just to improve our understanding, refresh what we might have learned long ago, um, uh, and that is so important in working sensibly with data. Um, on the other hand, uh, we also spend a lot of time uh, uh, providing space and opportunities for all staff at the library to learn more about um, uh, digital scholarship and how digital collections are impacting them. Uh, we do that through workshops, through hands-on training, uh, lectures, uh, something we call a hacking yak, which uh, involves a computational element often, um, and a, a reading group. And it's been really amazing to see literally hundreds of people um, from across the institution um, attend those classes and uh, learn more about, um, about this stuff. And it's also been really uh, reassuring to see that they're often able to directly integrate it into their own practices. <clears throat> um, and lastly, we innovate and collaborate. A lot of that is through joint uh, research projects. Um, um, a notable one in that category is a, a major new research project starting um, uh, just now. In fact, we're hiring a four new posts for it called Living With Machines that's being done jointly with the Turing Institute that uh, Phil Spence mentioned. Um, 
in, in his uh, introductory words, um, that's the National Institute for Data Science and AI, um, and here on, in, in the building. Um, and we hope and think that together, um, these initiatives uh, and the transformation that's begun within the library are having a profound impact. Uh, and again, um, having this lab that's been able enabled us to, inter to interact and engage with research community has been super uh, important for that. Okay, so wh why are we here? Um, we are seeing lots of labs uh, emerging around the world, some before us, uh, many after us, um, and uh, this, is not, um, this is not always easy going, okay? Um, we share a bunch of challenges. Um, uh, we all need to understand the value of a digital lab for library. Um, we all have the capability of learning a lot um, from each other, uh, and hopefully uh, these two days will be great for that. Um, we have different contexts and different approaches, and I'm hoping that we'll learn a lot by comparing and contrasting in the smaller groups, um, especially. Um, there's also, I think, a potential for having a real support network for people who are engaged in this common activity. And by doing that, we'll be able to build um, better labs and provide better support for our um, constituents and communities. Um, if we could have a couple of ground rules for how we're doing things uh, uh, these two days. So uh, we want everyone to work really hard, um, uh, but have some fun. Um, it's really important to me personally that everybody feels they have the opportunity to contribute and to provide input and that everybody's voice is heard. Um, so uh, let's, let's uh, make sure that we are thinking um, about that. Um, and I'd say any constructive contribution, any honest question should be and is welcomed. Um, maybe there's some values that can underpin that. Um, collaboration, cooperation, kindness are probably three, uh, three top ones. Um, but also, you know, put aside your worries, uh, the potential for, you know, all those things we might be, be fearful of. Uh, in group settings, let's be fearless. Um, uh, there are elephants in the room. Um, let's make sure we call out some of them and discuss them, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, uh, this won't be um, the effective uh, event that, that we hope it is. Um, there are going to be a lot of breakout groups during the two days. Um, one thing that uh, Mahendra has put together is a set of shared notes using Google Docs, um, which everyone can edit, um, but you don't all have to feel an obligation to. In fact, sometimes it's a bit distracting to kind of uh, typing while you're talking uh, and thinking, so we have identified in all of the breakout groups someone to act as a scribe. Um, they'll be editing Hopefully, if their Wi-Fi is good enough, the shared um, documents. Um, and if not, we'll be adding to it over the course of the day. Um, and then we're looking for some concrete outcomes uh, here as well. Um, we want better labs. That's the major outcome. Uh, we want increased understanding, support network. Um, we're actually going to take this as a starting point for uh, a, a report um, talking about labs uh, in libraries around the world. Uh, this is something that um, I hope a lot of input from today and tomorrow will lead to, um, and we'll be uh, delighted to share that um, as it evolves with you over the next six months or so. Um, and of course, we also want to find a way to tell the world uh, what we do and what you do. Um, and I'll just note about that with respect to uh, Twitter um, or other social sharing during the event. On the one hand, do feel comfortable doing that. On the other hand, um, if somebody has said, you know, look, I want to share something with you, and um, uh, it's about my institution, and maybe we should keep it in the room, you know, definitely keep it in the room, right? So, so if you're going to share something that somebody else said, you may want to ask them, please, um, uh, uh, before doing that. Good. Okay, so um, that's all that I wanted to say by way of an overview. Um, I hope you have a fantastic um, uh, two days.